Can you tell whether someone is intelligent or educated just by looking at them? Can you detect whether someone has something worthwhile to say by simply scanning them from head to toe? Well, if our current appreciation of intellectualism is anything to go by, the answer is a resounding yes. If you suspect there's an aesthetic model or a look to being smart, educated, and insightful, the internet has got you covered. The most prominent display of this in the discourse at the moment is the movement known as Dark Academia. The aim of it is to romanticize academic culture by use of a certain kind of aesthetic grammar. Of course, then the corollary of this becomes that other aesthetic palettes aren't commensurate with education, intelligence, etc. And this creates predictable problems that immediately show up when you see how Eurocentric these looks are, suggesting then that other cultural designs need not apply. This has already been discussed by others, and it has also been pointed out that many people have incorporated and included their cultures into this romantic tradition. But I suppose I have a larger question about intellectualism and it having a look in the first place. But before that, I just want to examine the whole Eurocentric thing a little bit more with a deliberate focus on how Africa, specifically South Africa, fits into all of this. Oh, and also one of the greatest cartoon shows of all time, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Okay then. The artist Nelson Makamo is a fantastic local talent who paints pictures of African children in a manner that has been described as optimistic, which is a treatment that that demographic has not particularly enjoyed in most media. The artistic vehicle he uses to convey this optimism is a conspicuously colored pair of glasses which he places on their faces and it is intentionally meant to hint at schooling and a sense of scholarly grandeur to these stereotypically unlikely subjects of such things. Technically though, glasses aren't for smarty folks. Everybody knows that's pants. Glasses are for people who can't see well. Education is a non sequitur. And I know what you're thinking. Hey X, those glasses are just a visual shorthand for smartness, one that you yourself are employing right now with those prominently placed frames that have no lenses on your face. Well, actually, perceptive viewer, in my case, it's the balaclava that intellectualizes the glasses, not the other way around. I'll let you figure that one out for yourself. Here's something to consider. Why didn't Nelson Makamo use indigenous artifacts to convey intelligence? Don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to say that glasses and their ability to make people see better is somehow anti-African. I'm simply saying the visual grammar of using glasses to communicate intelligence is not exactly lifted from traditional African slash South African iconography. You have to admit, there's a bit of an unintentional irony in the situation of using non-indigenously South African visual grammar to dignify indigenous South Africans, especially when we being aware that they are African is part of the message. If that didn't matter, then it wouldn't matter. If this technique was used just to depict the people around you, then fair game. But the glasses here intellectually glamorize the African faces, which has a latent function of similar logic to claiming that, for instance, Africans cannot be formal unless they wear neckties and business suits. Is there no artifact that conveys more dramatically endogenous expressions of intelligence? Well, the complicated answer is no. And that's not complicated only because English is kind of trippy when it comes to negative questions, but it's also complicated because what does that mean? 
Does that mean that African slash South African indigenous traditions do not have an appreciation for education and intelligence? Gasp! Was Ha F for Burt and his band of weirdos right all along? Enter Sokka, the genius of the water tribe. Sokka is an unconventional depiction of a smart character in media because he's not pale, he's not socially awkward, in fact, he's quite successful with his romantic interests. He's funny and a comic relief character, but also has great oceanic depths to him. The perfect unifying fact about all those last few details is the fact that his girlfriend turned into the moon. That's instant comedy instant profundity and tides i guess i had to tie it back to the ocean nailed it apart from being smart Sokka is also strongly connected to his tribe and traditions to the extent that sometimes you will see him wearing the tribal face paint of warriors or wearing a wolf head. These aren't artifacts that explicitly denote his intelligence, however, and instead mark him as, again, a warrior. But that doesn't mean his intelligence is not appreciated or valued. It's just that there isn't a particular prop for intelligence in his particular cultural background, the way they might be for something like love, for instance. Similarly, in the so-called Kosa culture, as one example, the best warriors used to be given the feather of the blue crane to wear as an indication of their caliber. However, there's no special feather for the particular grouping of characteristics that we call intelligence, which doesn't mean that it wasn't part of the culture or that it wasn't valued in other ways. Again, there's just no no feather. And honestly, isn't that the healthier attitude to have about intelligence? I mean, to give intelligence a feather is to suggest that the featherless do not possess it. Which makes sense with warriors because to be one is a product of the culture. But intelligence, loosely characterized, is the thing that produces culture or at least one of those things. So, in the same way that the name of God in certain Jewish traditions cannot be uttered since God is the one who does the naming and the uttering, likewise, intelligence cannot be dressed because intelligence does the dressing. It has no feather because it picks the feathers. Intelligence is the thing behind your eyes. It's invisible. The corollary of this attitude is that you cannot simply look at someone and judge their intelligence. Those kinds of prejudices that crush individuality in this manner are essentially avoided, which I submit is overall a healthier way to conceive of intelligence. Oh, and by the way, I don't mean this when it comes to situations where education, for example, is a product like at universities and the props that facilitate that sort of thing, the old graduation gowns, sashes, caps, etc. I'm not necessarily saying that those things in those specialized conditions ought to be done away with, just that we don't need a look for education or intelligence in general life. I mean, when you're at the airport, it can be helpful to see the pilots in their uniforms and the rest of the plane staff. But there's no telling one way or the other who and who is not a pilot when you're standing in line at checkers. And that is fine. That's okay. I don't have a problem with people even seeking to incorporate aspects of their culture in their graduation ceremonies in order to further inculcate that academic culture into the practices of their broader cultural background. It's this creeping up to the general world of civilian dress and cutting that space up into little chunks of who is and who isn't smart by some sartorial metric. That's what I have a problem with. And speaking of inculcation, there is an overlap between black and African modern aesthetic designs that also try to produce a look to intelligence. Usually the look involves natural hair, preferably in an afro, 
not using makeup, wearing polo necks or other bizarre items. I'm kind of kidding. Polo necks are good actually. So there are modern ways of adding things to the palette of dark academia or the more expressly inclusive gray academia, such that my concern is not can we, but rather should we? One of the defenses people mount up when you confront them about the uncomfortable implications of dark academia is that they say education is difficult and sometimes you need to truly immerse yourself and your surroundings in it if you're going to put up with the lifestyle. Thing is though, ultimately, it shows a lack of intellectual curiosity not to be suspicious as to why such a fashion that reinforces the status quo became the face of intelligence in the first place. Since intelligence and education, especially in the context of university, are considered forces meant to improve the world for the better. What does that say then about academic culture and institutions? And where was the critical thinking and analysis about these things from students when all of this began? Yeah, the absolute tragedy for me here is that the making of aesthetic designs for intellectualism, such as in the case of dark academia, seems to have produced intellectual style at the sacrifice of intellectual substance and at the risk of the intellectualization of stereotypes. Oh, and I hope it's clear that these stereotypes aren't just cultural, they are classist. You look at someone wearing overalls and you think, well, that person can't be any intelligent human being. That person doesn't have anything insightful to say. You know, it can be racial, it can be gender-based, etc. You might look at this guy and think, well, he probably has a lot of ignorant things to say about black people and racism and whatever. But then you look into it and you might be surprised. Quick note, we also need to keep a presence of mind about the plight of First Nations people. That thing came out in Canada not too long ago about the graves of the children that were being forced to abandon their culture. There is a disappearance of indigenous women in America as well that seemed to be on the rise. I don't know what the situation is at the moment. There's also the dwindling numbers of Khoisan people in Southern Africa, which is particularly devastating because they are the people that know how to live with situations of limited waters and droughts and things of that nature. And there was a drought in the Western Cape. There is a continuing drought in the Eastern Cape. Johannesburg very recently has been said that it cannot rely on its own supply of water. So the water wars might be, you know, approaching us slowly but surely. Same thing happening in other parts of the world where there seems to be these water shortages. We're going to have to deal with some very tough ways of living and it seems like we are eliminating the people who are the aesthetic of intellectualism when it comes to those things. It's not good. But hey, don't just take my word for it, I suppose. Figure it out for yourself.